Hey guys and welcome to Hara Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be talking about the barium swallow tests. And this is just a quick overview of the barium swallow test pertaining to all the esophageal pathologies. So let's get started. So first of all, what is the barium swallow test? Barium sulfate is a metallic compound that when ingested, coats the esophagus and stomach, making it appear opaque on an x-ray. It is used to help us see abnormalities of the upper digestive system. So as you can see on the picture on the right, we have the patient drinking the solution of barium sulfate and we have the x-ray machine with the radiographer and she's going to be taking some pictures of his upper GI tract. And usually the upper GI tract being soft tissues, they're not visible on x-ray. And with the help of barium sulfate, it actually paints out quite a clear image of the inner anatomy of the patient. So it is a very helpful diagnostic tool indeed. So before we get into the pathological barium swallow tests, what does a normal barium swallow test look like? The esophagus is the food pipe through which food passes, aided by peristaltic contractions from the pharynx to the stomach. It is a long, thin, smooth, hollow tube. The picture on the left shows a normal barium swallow and is an unpathological case. So this is what a typical normal barium swallow looks like. So basically the esophagus is this pipe or like a garden hose in which food passes from the oral cavity down into the stomach. So it's just a passage for food to pass through and this is typically what a normal barium swallow test would look like. So now let's get into some pathological cases. Zenker's diverticulum on barium swallow. A Zenker's diverticulum is a diverticulum of the mucosa of the pharynx, just above the cricopharyngeal muscle, meaning above the upper sphincter of the esophagus. It is a pseudo-diverticulum because it does not involve all the layers of the esophageal wall. So on the barium swallow test, you can see that that smooth, nice, hollow pipe is not very smooth at all because it has this pouch that has developed here. And this is a hypopharyngeal pouch, which is called Zenker's diverticulum. And this is what a Zenker's diverticulum typically looks like on a barium swallow test. The esophageal stricture on barium swallow. So an esophageal stricture is an abnormal narrowing of the esophagus. So you can see this tube is supposed to be the same circumference all the way down. But in the middle here, you can see that abnormal narrowing of that tube. And this is called an esophageal stricture. And this is what an esophageal stricture looks like on a barium swallow test. Esophageal viruses on barium swallow. So the esophageal viruses are abnormal enlarged veins in the esophagus. And this condition occurs most often in people with serious liver disease because of that collateral circulation so the veins that are usually found in that esophageal wall become enlarged and this is what it typically looks like on a barium swallow test. These little blotches where the barium doesn't actually stick properly to the wall is those areas where the enlarged veins are. So this is typically what esophageal viruses look like on a barium swallow test. Esophageal cancer on barium swallow. So the esophageal carcinomas tend to present with increasing dysphagia initially to solids and progressing to liquids as the tumor increases in size, obstructing the lumen of the esophagus. So those are the symptoms that the patient will present with, that dysphagia first to solids and then to liquids, and this will present in time. So the evolution of the disease is dysphagia first to solids and then to liquids. On barium swallow, we can note the irregular stricture and pre-stricture dilation with the holdup and the shouldering of the stricture. So usually when we have a malignancy, the malignancy or the tumor tends to invade its surroundings and that's the nature of most tumors. And as you can see here, it's not a very thin straight line. It's a very rigid rough line and that is actually a sign of a carcinoma. And you can see here, uh, like in that stricture we saw earlier, the only difference between the cancer stricture and a normal stricture is that in a cancer stricture, we will have that irregular borders. 
and you can see above the stricture um, is a dilation because that food is trying to push through but it's becoming increasingly difficult to do so and uh, this is a sign of esophageal cancer on barium swallow the esophageal webs on barium swallow Esophageal webs refer to a partial esophageal constriction caused by a thin mucosal membrane or the inner layer of the esophagus projecting into the esophageal lumen. So if you guys are familiar with my videos, you would have remembered that we discussed that anatomically speaking, the esophagus is made up of four main layers and that's the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscular layer and the adventitia. And when we have an esophageal web, we have a slight constriction in the esophagus because we have this uh, piece here that is jutting into that lumen and that is made up of the innermost layer which is the mucosa of the esophagus and this is what an esophageal web essentially is. So when we have that web that juts into the esophagus it's going to constrict the lumen a bit because food is going to just not be able to pass down through this point. So the patient can and may present to the clinic with dysphagia. And this is what an esophageal web looks like on barium swallow. Esophageal ulcers on barium swallow. So an esophageal ulcer is an erodative sore that forms in the wall of the esophagus and the ulcer appears as a localized collection of barium. So this actual barium swallow x-ray is of a patient who suffers with esophagitis and that is due to chronic reflux. And that is one of the major causes of esophageal ulcers. So the fact that this, uh, the barium is not stuck very well to this esophagus is because there is inflammation of that esophagus. And that is an esophagitis. But you can see here, pointed out with the black arrowhead, there is a collection or a localization of that barium. And that is essentially what an esophageal ulcer looks like. So whenever you see a collection of barium in a circular sort of way, that should ring a bell and you should remember that that is an esophageal ulcer. Diffuse esophageal spasms on barium swallow. The diffuse esophageal spasms are a condition characterized by uncoordinated contractions of the esophagus, which may cause difficulty in swallowing or dysphagia, as well as regurgitation. It produces the typical corkscrew or rosary bead appearance on contrast studies. So this is diffuse esophageal spasms. So we have a problem with the peristalsis. We have the muscular layer of the esophagus which is spasming and it produces this kind of image on a barium swallow. And you can see this rosary bead or corkscrew appearance because of the specific pattern that it makes out. It looks like a corkscrew or a rosary bead. Schatzky ring on barium swallow. A Schatzky ring is a narrowing of the lower esophagus that may cause difficulty in swallowing, which is dysphagia. The narrowing is caused by a ring of the mucosal tissue which lines the esophagus or muscular tissue. So Schatzky's rings are usually found in the lower part of the esophagus, which makes it different from the other pathologies and it normally is a very clean cut ring like image. So you can see that it's a very neat circular ring that we can see on a barium swallow. And this is typical for a Schatzky ring. Achalasia on barium swallow. Achalasia is a form of esophageal dysmotility characterized by the loss of the distal esophageal peristalsis and failure of the lower esophageal sphincter to relax. Note the bird's beak or rat's tail appearance at the gastroesophageal junction. So I did do a video on achalasia. Actually, I've done a video on mostly all of these pathologies. So you can go through the gallery and look at those videos and watch them. But if you remember from that video, we discussed that the peristalsis in the lower part of the esophagus is lost, as well as there is a failure of this lower esophageal sphincter to relax. So usually at, we have the sphincter, which is called the LES or the lower esophageal sphincter. And it's also known as the gastroesophageal junction or the GEJ. And this is essentially this area here. So in achalasia, we have a failure of this portion to relax. And because it's constricted so tightly, it doesn't allow the food to pass that freely from the esophagus into the stomach. And on barium swallow, we can note a bird's beak. You can see this looks like a bird's beak or a rat's tail appearance. 
and above you can see the dilation of the esophagus because we have that food that is collecting up there it's unable to push past this obstruction so we are going to have a collection of food here and it's going to make that esophagus dilate and then we have the thinning of the GEJ or the gastroesophageal junction or if you want to call it the LES, a very tight LES, lower esophageal sphincter. And this is typically what achalasia looks like on a barium swallow test. Hiatal hernia on barium swallow. A hiatal hernia occurs when part of the stomach pushes upward through the diaphragm and the diaphragm normally has a small opening which is a hiatus through which the food tube, which is the esophagus, passes on its way down to connect to your stomach. The stomach can push up through this opening and cause a hiatal hernia. So here we see the diaphragm and this part, which is a portion of the stomach, is usually below the diaphragm but it has pushed its way up through this hiatus. There is a hole here in which the esophagus meets the stomach. And in a hiatal hernia, we have that portion of the stomach which has pushed its way into the thoracic cavity. And this is typically what it looks like on a barium swallow. You see this bubble or bulge that is appearing above the diaphragm, which is actually not supposed to be there. And we notice the gastroesophageal junction, which is sort of a landmark to tell us that this portion, this bubble that is here, is actually not part of the esophagus, it's part of the stomach. So we notice that landmark there, that thin line there, and that's the gastroesophageal junction. And this is typically what a hiatal hernia looks like on a barium swallow. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care. Bye for now.